Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SolidCam. In this video, we'll be talking about uh, creating a tool component from a solid file. So one of the new options inside of the SolidCam toolkit is to define all your tool components from a solid file. That could be a end mill, it could be a thread mill like this one, it could even be the holder that you're using as well. So everything has the ability to be defined as a as a solid. Um, now, how we do that is more to do with the geometry that we're bringing in than uh, the solid itself. And what I mean by that is you can define any sort of STL file you'd like from a solid, but you wanna make sure that it comes in under a coordinate system that you wanna lock into. So in a previous video, we've covered how these tools assemble together, because the main focus of the new toolkit is to actually assemble tool components together to form the overall shape of the tool we're looking to use. In this case, we're gonna define what those shapes actually look like. So let's start with this thread mill that we have here. <clears throat> this is one that was drawn in for me, but you can also get your solids from your tooling suppliers. Uh, most tool suppliers have a, a, a step file or uh, an IGES file or any other file format. As soon as you bring it into SolidWorks, it becomes a SolidWorks file, and then you have the ability to save it as an STL. So let's take a look at this model here. What you wanna do is set a coordinate system that becomes your mounting point in the terms of tools. So for both turning inserts and for milling tools, you wanna to get something that looks like this. Now for the milling tool, I want it to have the Z axis pointing upwards because when we go to use a tool inside SolidCam, the Z axis is the tool axis. And the X and the Y, well, I mean, when we go to use this tool, it's gonna to be spinning. So the X and Y are not entirely that important for milling tools, uh, other than if it mounts, if it needs to mount a certain way with your holder. Now, in terms of turning inserts, uh, we covered in the how to create turning tools, um, what the coordinate system should look like there. But the coordinate system is created inside of SolidWorks on top of your SolidWorks file. So you can see here that I have it on top center of this milling tool. And to create coordinate systems inside SolidWorks, let me just hide this one, we'll recreate it. You can go to Features, Reference Geometry, Coordinate System. Now I find a lot of times it might be easier to sketch something. So in this case, I've sketched the top center of that, that face, or you can draw in the lines as well, because what you're really doing here is you're selecting the origin. Now, if the tool was from your tool supplier and the origin was already predefined like this one was, and it actually is in a good position, then you can just use the predefined origin. You might even be able to use the predefined coordinate system from that SOLIDWORKS file. But this one was not. So I'm gonna shift it. So I'm gonna say the origin is actually this tip right here. And it adopts the coordinate system directions from the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system, as you see in the bottom left corner. But in the case that it didn't, you can always click on these options here. You can either click on a line to align that coordinate system, or you can click on a face to orient that. So for instance, let's say if I click on the x-axis and I click on this face, it makes the x-axis perpendicular to that face. Obviously that's not what I'm looking for. So if I go to Z, I'll click on that face and the z-axis is perpendicular once again. So you wanna create a coordinate system basically like that. So once you have a coordinate system on screen, you wanna convert this to an STL. So we can go to File, Save As, and the file format needs to be an STL. So instead of SOLIDWORKS part file, we'll go to STL. We'll go to our options. And we'll make sure that we're outputting this under the units that we brought it in from. So if my file, if you look in the bottom right corner here, is in inches, then I want to make sure that my settings are in inches as well. So settings are inches and units. I'm going to do a fine resolution because this is going to be the tool that it interacts with the stock. So I want to make sure it's accurate. I want to make sure I don't translate any positive space. And if this was an assembly that I'm trying to create as one file, I want to make sure that it does just collapse that into one file. But more importantly is down here. So this STL will be saved under whatever coordinate system I select. In this case, I want it to be saved under coordinate system number one. I'll click OK, and then I'll save it as whatever file uh, name I'd like. This is just the shape of the tool. To actually use this tool, we can go to Tools, Solid Cam Toolkit, New Tool Library, and we're creating it as a component. This is an individual component in an assembly, so we're just going to do Tool Components. And you choose your type. 
that's closest to the shape. In this case, I was intending to define a thread mill, so I'll just drag thread mill to cutters. And we've covered how to define milling tools in a previous video. Here, I'm just gonna go right to defining the shape type as 3D model. I'm gonna browse to that STL that I defined, this guy right here. And when I click open, you can see that it brings in that exact shape. It's locked into that position that I defined there, so it's defined as being from that top center. And the rest of this is just, again, milling tool definition, like we saw in the previous video. But defining a tool from a solid is as simple as defining the solid as an STL, and then when you bring it in here, it's just the direct import. So let's get out of here. So let's take a look at holders. So holders are a little different because as we saw in the previous video, in a tool assembly, a end mill or an insert would sit inside of a holder or an adapter. So what we need to do here is not only define our mounting point, which was that coordinate system I had on the top there. And in this case, for this particular machine, I'm defining it as the Z going in that direction and the X going in that direction, as you see there. So that will be my mounting point. That is how it's mounted in the machine mounted in the turret of this particular machine. But since there are three slots in this holder, I need to define three joints, because the joints are where the actual tool will sit. They will actually mate or assemble with this holder. So I've actually added coordinate systems for each joint. So that is joint one, that is joint two, and that is joint three. They're all at different angles. And I did that, again, by adding a sketch. So for instance, joint one, is defined as being on this face, up against this face, up against that face. And I did that by just saying that that is the origin of that coordinate system. The X is in that direction, the Z is in that direction, the Y is in that direction. And that is simply so that when I bring in my turning tool, it locks into place automatically once I drag and drop a tool on top of there. When I generate this as an STL, I'm actually saving it under that mounting position because I want this STL to be defined by that origin right there, the origin of the mounting point. The joints, I actually just collect the, the, the positions of those joints from the mounting position, because that's the information I plug in when I define my, uh, my holder. And to get that information, we're gonna use what's called the solid cam utilities. If you don't have the solid cam utilities tab in your SolidWorks tab, then it is a, um, uh, a little software you can download directly from the solidcam.com website. And essentially what you wanna use here is the coordinate system matrix. What this allows me to do is go to my feature tree and choose as my master coordinate system or my master reference, the mounting point. Because again, when I bring this in as my holder definition, I'm gonna use that as my reference. That's gonna be my X, Y, Z, A, B, C, all at zero. And I need to tell it that I want to measure from there to let's say joint one. So from the mounting to joint one, these are the distances. These are the shifts in the X and the Y direction, X, Y, Z, and these are the rotations. In this case, station one is in the same direction as the mounting, so X is in the same direction. Whereas if I click on, let's say, joint three, for that third tool in this holder, you can see that it has the X, Y, Z shifts, but it also has that rotation around the Z axis of the 120. So, what I would do is I would take a screen grab of these or write down these numbers, however you wanna record these numbers, and I'll use those to plug into my definition. So let's take a look at that definition. So we'll go to Tools, Solid Cam, Toolkit, and I'm gonna to go to Edit Tool Library where I've already used this holder. Okay, so there's the mini turret that I defined with my three joints. Each one of those uh, shanks sits in an, each joint. So if I click on the first one, it sits under joint one. Joint one, these numbers here were defined from my, uh, my, my solid cam utilities direct, uh, definition. So if we take a look at, let's say, tool three, that's sitting in joint three. And it actually is sitting with the insert inside the shank, inside the holder. And you can see that it's defined as being in that particular corner right there. Now, it looks a little different, but that's because the tool definitions are 
um, different than my joint. So if your tool locks into the joint you define in your holder, but in the wrong position, you have the ability to do a shift on the mounting. So the original mounting was probably something like this. Let's get out of there. Let's put that to zero. And we'll see that tool actually did lock into my joint. My joint is that back corner, but these turning tools are defined as being on the, on the other corner. So I needed to correct that just by doing a shift in the Y position. So even if you are defining your holders, but you're getting a default tool from uh, another library or from one of the standard tools that come with SolidCam, and the joint of that tool doesn't match the joint that you define for your holder, you still have the ability to come in here and add a little bit of a shift. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Uh, and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this uh, training video series. Thanks for watching.